Well, hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks, and uh, decided to extractify um, the work that I did putting together the recent dual tank 100 millimeter diameter watertight cylinder from R and R. It's kind of a funky design because you got to split things in half. Hopefully, this video will make it, uh, you know, kind of simple for you, allow you to follow along, and even if you don't have an R and R, it's kind of neat to see how other cylinders are put together. So uh, buckle in, we're about to get wet. So this is the unit as it comes out of the box. You can see we've got some spare parts left over from brushless motor uh, installation inside. Um, this is optionally outfitted with a brushed motor as well. Going from uh, front to back. Well, let's start at the back. Back to front, we have our main drive seal here. And you'll notice this is loose. This is pretty typical. So we need to make sure that we're going to address this before we finish up. Our two linkage outputs in the back. Uh, power switch, which we're going to be doing away with. We're going to be installing a remote on-off switch. Servos, full-size servos, your rear ballast pump. There's the snorkel intake right there. Uh, nothing interesting under there. Let's just not look there. Big battery pocket on the inside. And this in the center is the secret sauce. This is the interface between the forward and aft bulkheads inside so that you're not making up and breaking apart wire connections. This is pretty slick, although it does take a little bit of extra work to make happen. Then we got forward servos, two forward servos here, and our forward ballast tank pump. And that's it. Nice and simple, easy to go. I think these are both 750 mil uh, ballast tanks, so about uh, 1.5 mils total uh, ballast tank capacity. So what we're going to do, we're going to open this up and uh, get to looking at the uh, equipment tray and starting to put things together. So we're going to pull off our uncut oh, ballast hose here from both sides. We're just going to lay it aside up there. Now, you got to kind of just wiggle, 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 and then it just pops out. Look at that. Oh. Side one, wiggle, wiggle. Just grab it by the ballast tank. Just give it a little round and round. Bloop. Oh, it comes. We've got both sides of the cylinder made it up together. We can put it together as a single piece uh, in terms of all the wiring and all of that stuff so that when we get to putting it together, it'll all just kind of match up together. So as I mentioned, we're going to be putting in a remote on off switch. And as such, we don't need this at all. This is a little latching switch. You can see it working there. Um, that you could use if you want to, but I don't. So uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna aggressively decapitate it right here on both sides. So we're not dealing with stuff that we're not gonna use. Let's just set this aside. That's a spare parts bin. We we'll get our file. We'll clean up our chops, and then what we want to do is pull out this whole switch thing the uh the fewer penetrations you have in your hull the less likely you're going to have a leak so we'll pull that whole switch assembly out and we'll just cap it uh unless we can think of a cool thing to use the 1 16th hole for which i can't really think of right now but let's go ahead and do that i'm doing things in a very particular order which actually i'm not i'm just doing it as i kind of get occurred to want to do things and since we're at the back here anyway uh, I'm going to do the uh, the linkages for the stern you open up the baggie of, of parts and we're going to use this but we only want half of it so this is the the horn double-sided horn we're just going to snip off one side now before you do that um, 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 we're going to center our servos because when you apply these horns, you can put them one way and they'll be 90 degrees. But if you spin them around, they won't be, if that makes any sense. So let's, uh, let's get our servo tester, center our servos, and then put our horns on. Servo's been centered. Now, this is, this is what I was talking about. 
before. So they're centered. And if you look at it from the top, it's like canted to the left here a little bit. But if we take this and spin it, whoop, whoop, whoop hopefully this is in the right, yeah. Now it's vertical. That's kind of what we want. Otherwise you end up with a little more throw on one side than the other, which isn't the end of the day, but it's not what you want. So that means we can cut this side off and then do our bends. And what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna choose the third hole out and I'm gonna drill it with a 564 bit. That just makes uh, inserting the uh, linkage horn or linkage rod there a lot easier uh, and it results in a better throw that with less binding. So we can push this rod through, feed it into the horn, snap the horn in place. Now, what you'll notice is that this rod is all bent up. I'm gonna grab some pliers and do a nice bend so that we've got very straight actuation of this with no binding in this bulkhead. And our finished servos. Testing, nice and smooth, no binding. Get those centered again, there we go. Um, the other thing we're gonna to wanna to do is pop off our magnetic linkages and cut off the extra brass so that these basically just sit right here, right at the right at the end. There's no need for these long arms sticking out. It's not hurting anything, but uh, there's no need in having the long floppy arms if we don't need them. Same deal with the forward servos. You can see that uh, they're installed about the third hole from the end. Nice bend, making sure that this is perfectly aligned with the output. And uh, if you do it properly, you get a nice smooth operation. Unplug our servos, and now we're gonna move on to the battery. Now I'm gonna put this huge honking 5211.1 in there. There's a bulkhead here, which we may need to modify a little bit. But uh, I think this is gonna fit nice. This is, this is the right width for this. Palvoy 5200 is what I've got here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and trace this out and we're gonna bust out my ultrasonic cutter, do some notching and uh, get it to fit. That's what the pocket looks like. And then the battery, if I just move the servo cables out of the way here, just drops in, boop, like that. Going nowhere. Secret sauce, gotta make sure you do a notch there. Do you need to do all of these modifications? Do you need to use the battery I'm using? Absolutely not. Everything I'm doing is open to interpretation. If you don't like it, do it differently. And if you think you need to follow it religiously and you start to throw yourself into convulsions if you can't find the exact right parts, uh, just chill. Just take a chill pill. It's fine. Get something similar. It'll still work. Next up, remote switch. I took the case off, and this is the remote heavy duty on off switch 15 amp that I've got the link to in my favorite products on my website. Um, this is just gonna live on the battery, right here. So you just pull the whole module out, and then you don't have to you know, uh, worry about disconnecting and, and, and all that stuff. I'm gonna put some heat shrink on there though, just because I don't like pointy things, pointing at a lithium battery. So, and it'll look, it'll look better too. So we'll put this on, heat it up, and then uh, we'll get to our electrical connections here in a moment. Here is my heat shrunkified remote switch, uh, just two-sided tape to the battery with a, a, an extension on here that will connect to the battery. Power in, red and black, power in for this particular module. Um, now what we need to do is work out our output, which is the white and black and that's going to feed power to the uh, electronic speed controller for the ballast system, the ballast system, and the main drive motor. Gonna quickly install the AD2 electronic pitch controller. That's gonna go on one of the two stern servos. And uh, basically, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna plug it in, mount it with some sticky tape uh, underneath the cylinder tray. Next up, installation of the brushless electronic speed controller, uh, which is uh, paired with this brushless motor, and you can tell it's brushless because it's got three wires sticking out of it. This is a 12 amp electronic speed controller. Typically at full tilt, this motor will be pulling about four, so we got about triple the capacity that we need to, and it's in a nice, small, economical package. Um, I am going to solder on 
to these leads the uh, little bullet connectors that come with this. So uh, I'm gonna go bust out my torch and then that way we can just connect uh, all of the wires up and uh, installation should be a breeze. The electronic speed controller has been connected to the brushless motor and you can see the bullet connectors that I have on here. I'm just gonna cover those with some heat shrink. Now, it doesn't matter which way you hook these up. If you switch wires around, it'll just change the direction that the brushless motor spins. So you just wanna make sure that these aren't gonna short, which is why you've got the heat shrink on there. And of course we wanna test it. So we've got, we've got our bi-directional control of that uh, brushless motor. And now we can go about uh, heat, heating this up making that a quasi-permanent connection because that'll also, because it's uh, adhesive heat shrink, it'll hold those together so they don't come apart. And we're just gonna find a convenient spot to put it. And it looks like there's a nice open area right behind the servo there. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Moving on to installation of the electronic speed controller for the ballast pump. We got our brushed, brushed electronic speed controller, two wires. Uh, I mounted it up on top here just because it's nice and convenient and we can easily put our servos Servo leads on the on the connectors here. Um, you notice that these are labeled. We've got main battery power and we've got pump power. So now we just need to connect pump power to our uh, pumps. And the uh, forward ballast pump has been wired in. This is where I elected to put the electronic speed controller. It fits nice in there. And obviously where you put it is gonna depend on what speed controller you use. The other thing that we need to do here right now that I think about it, that I didn't do, is uh, quickly tack a capacitor across the two terminals here to help eliminate RF noise when the pump is in operation, which is important because the receiver is in close proximity to it. So we're gonna grab a, a, a 0.1 millifarad capacitor, run it across the terminals on both pumps, and then we'll be in much better position. Now we need to start running wires. And uh, before we do that, we need to figure out where we're gonna put our receiver. Now, if we take a look at the stuff, we've got two servos, two motors, four units for servo connections, two servos and a pump, three servo connections. So just because I'm lazy, we're gonna put the receiver on this side. It doesn't matter, it could go on either side. Or with these new radios, you could put a receiver on each side and connect them together, which to a certain degree would be less work but we're just gonna use one, it's fine. Um, and I think we're just gonna put it right here. What we need to do here is uh, secure this with some tape, connect these servo connections to the receiver. But on this side, these servo connections are gonna need to run through these pins. And this is the mounted receiver, uh, just two-sided tape on the bottom. I mounted the antennas, one on the top, just a little bit of the tape, I'm just gonna hold it so it doesn't get in our way. And then I tuck the other one in underneath. It won't go perfectly straight. You have to curve it. So it just tucked in and you can see it make kind of a U shape right there. Ideally you want these antennas at 90 degrees to each other, but that's just not feasible in 90% of cylinders. So uh, this will work. This will work just fine. The other thing I've done is I, uh, I grabbed one of these two in four out uh, power blocks. You get these on Amazon, you can get like 10 of them for, you know, a nickel. And uh, this runs into the electronic switch. So this is power out. And I put a connector in here so that you can disconnect it, take the whole battery out to charge it. Um, if you didn't want to put a connector in here, you could literally just run these wires directly in here. And every time you charge the battery, just pull it up. The reason we want four uh, on the outside is we need power out to the block, but also power out to the uh, electronic speed controller for the ballast pump. And that way you don't need to do any splicing or everything. I just, I like this because it makes things tidy and easy to maintain. Main power from the distribution block. So it's gonna come in from the switch into the block, flow out into this distribution block, which will go to that distribution block, which will go to all of the fun stuff on the back side. Now we need to look after our servos, which we're probably gonna put on the bottom here. Here is the wiring for this forward section. 
Start with the electronic speed controller. We've got main power running down through a little hole and into the power block. So now our power distribution is all done. Main power will come in, or sorry, out uh, through there. So in and then through to the electronic speed controller. You'll notice I cut the red wire for this electronic speed controller because this has a built-in uh, BEC, a two amp BEC. Don't need it because we got power on the other side. So we just trimmed that wire, ran it through. Now the two servos and the electronic speed controller, they can all share the same positive and negative. So you can see I've got both positive leads for the servos connected there. And then all three grounds are right next to it right there. So now we know that this is uh, five volt on the bottom here, five volt positive and negative. And this is 12 volt positive and negative over there. And then each signal wire goes in its own slot here, which corresponds to these right here. So now we just need to make sure whatever we do on the other side matches up to what we did on this side. And of course, everything is tidy. I use these little wire clips to make sure that the cables don't fall down or anything like that. So I think aside from maybe tidying up this antenna for the remote on off switch, this forward section is done. Power positive and negative for the servos got connected to this lead, which uh, is the motor. So positive, negative, and signal. So the motor signal, positive and negative. Now that positive and negative from the receiver is gonna feed all of this stuff. So the only thing that we need for the uh, 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 pump ESC and the servo is signal. And uh, we've got that signal wire running up, plugged into channel two right there. And then we've got a spare, which is the other one, which is just sitting right here, kind of loose, hanging out because we ran out of channels in the receiver. But he'll have one functional servo up at the front. So in theory, all we need to do now is plug it in and uh, hope nothing explodes. All right, let's take a look at this. All the functions, it's all connected together. It's all acting as one big cylinder. We've got rudder on the right stick. We've got forward planes on the right stick. We have throttle on the left stick. And uh, I put that in an expo curve, so it's a little, little less jumpy as a big brushless. We've got a bow system, and because there's two tanks, we can control it individually. So this is the rear tank. This is the forward tank. Or if you don't want to be bothered, this switch controls them both. So you, you could, uh, you know, flood the front, let wait a few seconds, flood the back if you want your boat to go, you know, down like that or up like that or adjust the trim or do all sorts of cool things. And that's it. That's all it takes to get that thing all put together. Uh, it's a great design, uh, lots of fun, lots of flexibility in there. So uh, if you're interested, you can snag one off my website, nautilusdrydogs.com. If you have any questions, drop them below. Otherwise... Have a great rest of your day. Catch you next time.